Higher English poems last supper. Not just for Lent, forever. She's not just given him up for a while, but forever. And John Mont emphasizes the long time that forever really is. His sweet flesh suggests she's reluctant to get rid of him because she still loves him. It could also mean a sexual relationship. After all, didn't they always eat together rather more than rather well? Question used for an aside showing us how well he was treated, but yet he still betrayed her. Tearing foliage, scrambling the salad. Violent verbs describe the food preparation and shows the inner anger of the woman. The cooked goose, pun meaning that he has been caught out for whatever indiscretion he has had. Imagining it done with, suggests that before her revenge has even been carried out, she is getting over it. It suggests doesn't want to face the issue directly. The girls. Capital suggests a group name, a planning for them to come together. Those three met again, referring to the Shakespeare's three witches. Cackling around the cauldron, images of the witches continued, malicious group of girls. Spitting out the grislier bits, the man's flaws will be fine picked by the group of women. Gnawing the knuckle bone, alliteration has an onomatopoetic effect Hyperboles used to show the worst points of the man. That's rich. Anything he'd say was spoken when he was not in a position to speak. Munching the lies, fat and sizzling as sausages. Imagery here suggests they were at times fooled by the lies. Preening like corbies. Comparison of women to crows shows predator type of nature. Get hungry and go hunting again. Ready to move on and find another man.